Okay, let's face it, the success or failure of your project can often come down to how well you measure stuff up. Trust me, I've come unstuck on many an occasion because of that very reason. Because as the old saying goes, sometimes it's the archer and not the arrow that's the problem. If you know what I mean. G'day folks, Uncle Knackers here. Now to make life easier for us head scratching, measuring challenged DIYers, in today's video I'm going to share with you five life changing measuring hacks guaranteed to make life easier and also to help improve your productivity. Let's go. Now with woodworking there are times, who am I kidding? There are many times that where you need to find the center of a board or in fact break that board up into equal parts. Now this method is one of the coolest ones going around. It doesn't require any complicated mathematics, so it's right up my alley. And all you need is either a builder square, tape measure, or a ruler. Now don't get me wrong, you can still use the old method of measuring the width with your ruler or tape measure and then dividing by two, but you can make a mistake, especially if this is an odd number or a tricky fraction. Try this out and see how you go. With the outside tip or point of your ruler or tape measure, carefully line that outside tip or point up to the edge of the board. Now check this out. With that point sorted, all you need to do is to pivot from there until a large whole number comes in contact with the edge of our board. Now in my case, that's 400 millimeters. So if I come back 200, which is a halfway point, and put a mark, that point right there is going to be exactly in the center of that board. Now 400 is also 16 inches, so if we came back eight inches, put that same mark in place, that again would be the center of that board. Now the beauty of this is that we're only dealing in large whole numbers, so it's actually quite simple to divide by two. We're not trying to divide an odd number or a complicated fraction, so for me, that's a big win. Now just say for instance you want to break this board up into four different segments. All you need to do is with that 400 on the edge right there, put marks at 100, 200 and 300 and you'll finish up with four equal segments. Gotta love that. Now personally, I don't own a purpose-built marking gauge, but I do have a homemade one that does the job just as well. Now this great little tip came from Colin Kinnett over at the Woodwork Web. And all I did was in the center of my combination square blade, I drilled a small hole smack on that 10 millimeter mark. If this was a imperial combination square, I'd drill that hole at the one inch mark. Now just say for example that I wanted to mark a 70 millimeter line all the way along here. All you need to do is to set your combination square to 80 millimeters. Remember, we've already come in 10 and then lock that off with the locking nut, which is that thing there, and then just simply place a sharp pencil into that hole and away you go. Now if we go ahead and do a little check, you'll see that that is now a perfect 70 millimeters. Now here's a great tip just in case you don't have a pencil, nice and handy. Now virtually all combination squares come with this very handy feature, which surprisingly not many people know about. If you're one of them, let me know down below. And that is, it's this little knob here that either screws out or pulls out, depending on the model that you have. And what it is, is this very handy little marking scribe with a very sharp hardened tip also good for marking metal and masonry, and we can use this instead of our pencil. Speaking about measuring things, I do apologize in advance for today's dad joke. Friends kept telling me that I wasn't good enough to make jokes about tape measures. <laughs> Fair dinkum, true story. They told me I'd never measure up. <laughs> Cheeky sods. Give them tape measures in a minute. Now here's a really cool trick if you're trying to mark a square line and you don't have yourself either a large framing square or a T-square. 
Now my old mate Pythagoras was the genius behind this mathematical wizardry and I'm pretty sure the Egyptians were all over it when they were building their pyramids. It's called the 345 method and this is how you do it. Now before I go ahead and show you how to do that, this is a quick example of how the 345 method works. And it doesn't matter whether you're using inches, centimetres, feet or metres, it's all going to work out the same. Now this row here is example one and this row here is example two. Now the idea is to increase each of those numbers by the same increment. So for this row here, example one, I'm using the increment of 100 millimetres. So three times 100 is 300, four times 100 is 400, and five times 100 is 500. And for example two, down here, I'm using the increment of 200 millimetres. So three times 200 is 600, four times 200, 800, and five times 200 is 1,000 or a metre. And using that framework, let's go ahead and mark a square line. So basically, all we're trying to do is to mark a square 90 degree line off that edge. Now for this example, I'm using increments of 100 millimetres because it suits the size of the sheet. But like I said before, that could be three metres, four metres, five metres, or three feet, four feet, five feet. It just depends on the job that you're working on. But for this, their first measurement is 300 millimetres. So lock your tape over the end and mark 300 right on the edge. Now for the 400 millimetre measurement, just grab your tape measure and on its side, place the inside edge on our mark and then run the tape out just past 400 millimetres. Now on the inside of your tape, not the outside, but the inside, run your thumb down until it just kisses that 400 millimetre mark and then rest your pencil against that and draw a small arc. And for the 500 millimetre measurement, just again place the inside edge of our tape on that corner, run that out to 500 millimetres, lock your thumb at that point, and then draw an arc, and it should intersect the previous one that we just did. Now because we use the 3, 4, 5 method, where these two lines intersect here and they're marked down there, if we draw a line straight up through them, we'd finish up with a beautifully square line to that edge. And if we do a little test, you'll see that that is absolutely perfect. And now we can use that line and that edge as reference points for future measurements. Thanks Pythagoras. Now once again using our combination square with that hole drilled in the end at the 10 millimeter mark, this is a great tip for marking out a circle. Simply set your combination square to the size of the circle that you want, lock that off and take into consideration that we're starting at the 10 millimeter mark. Take out our marking scribe from the end, place it through the hole and lightly tap that into the wood. Then place your pencil tight and hard up against the blade and the handle and away you go. Now one hand is all you need and check this out. Beautiful. Now this next one isn't exactly a measuring hack per se, but it is a great use of a tape measure. Now we've all done this, but accidentally dropping or knocking an object into a hard to reach place can be a real pain, especially for old blokes like me with a crook back and dicky knees. Now to help retrieve that dropped object, just grab yourself a magnet like I have here and place that on the end of your tape. Then all you need to do is extend your tape measure and retrieve the dropped object. Too easy. Great tip, knackers! Now if you want to see more videos just like this one, make sure you check out my workshop hacks playlist, which should be popping up over there very shortly. Hope to see you there soon. And if you found some value in today's video, please consider a small donation to my Buy Me A Coffee Fund, which helps me to keep the lights on over here at Do Your Wife and Knuckleheads, so I can produce more content for you guys. And I'll leave a link to that down below. Alrighty, after all that, I'm off for a cup of tea. So till next time, be good, be safe, and I'm out of here. Cheers. Cheers.